As a matter of fact, we should not be surprised that the lawyers got the prices uh, for ideal or perfect forecasting. There is a rather vitriolic joke about economists that uh, they respond to questions not because they know the answers, but because they are asked. Uh, so I was asked about uh, uh, what is the character of this uh, deceleration of growth in Poland. Well, I make two assumptions. Assumption number one is that uh, we are talking about Poland, uh, not about global economy. Uh, assumption number two is that we are talking uh, in a rather short-term perspective. Not, not a lot. We are not talking about trends really this time, but about uh, what could happen in Poland in say two, three years. One, two, three years. Um, well, because I think that as far as the longer term perspective is concerned about Poland, there is not much uh, that much uh, that is uh, that we can guess. It's it's obvious that uh, that that uh, Polish growth will decelerate. There are so many uh, prevailing factors that that it's it's almost inevitable. Well, okay. So, are we losing speed? Yes, and it's good news. And it's good news because I think that the 5% growth rate that we have observed in the last two years is uh, unsustainable and will inevitably uh, lead to mounting uh, disequilibria. Uh, and then something very, very nasty would happen. So I think a slowdown is something that we should not be really afraid of at all. The problem is whether the sources, or the reasons of this slowdown are internal or external, or, and then how deep is going, the, the slowdown is going to be. Well, let's start with internal um, factors. Well, we should look uh, from a very textbook-like uh, uh, perspective. We should look at three main uh, um, elements of, uh, of GDP. That is uh, consumption, investment, and uh, exports. Well, and here, as far as exports are concer is concerned, uh, we should, uh, we should um, uh, expect uh, the net exports to be in the negative territory in the next uh, in the next few years, uh, mainly because of the situation around us. Second, investment. Well, public investment is not going to accelerate because it is already humming uh, quite uh, quite quite nicely. Uh, as a matter of fact, the private, cons private investment is, uh, well, not very dynamic, but uh, I don't see a reason why it should decelerate too much. Well, then, what we are left with is consumption. Consumption is the, is the most important uh, element of GDP, the most important part of GDP. And... Um, in fact, it's about 80% of GDP. So what happens in consumption basically determines the, uh, uh, the dynamics of GDP. We can expect a certain slowdown of consumption uh, because uh, the employment is not growing uh, anymore, basically. What is growing, whatever, growth in employment we are recording is uh, basically the, the increase of uh, uh, Ukrainians being uh, officially employed on the market, which is good, but uh, it will not, uh, it will not uh, go on forever. Uh, so I think that consumption could stabilize or, or slow down, and this would be the main the main engine, the main factor behind deceleration of growth. Well, now let's turn to external factors. 
Of course, exports is about external factors too, but here we have so many uncertainties in the global economy that we could hardly predict what, is, what will happen. These ex uncertainties uh, result from the changes in uh, uh, economic policy after the global financial crisis. QE, quantitative easing, well, we don't really know uh, how to exit QE and whether we will afford exiting from QE. But what is certain is that QE is basically disrupting all or many things that we have known about uh, macroeconomics. Uh, Taylor rule, well, it's only John Taylor that is left of the rule. And, uh, and, and, and Phillips curve is flat, meaning that uh, no matter how uh, low the, the unemployment rate, inflation, does not want to pick up. So we, have, we are in the dark. We economists have not fully grasped the consequences of QE. Second, banks. We are not sure what, whether the banks are prepared for the next crisis. Well, formally they are in much better shape than before the crisis, but we don't really know. And especially in Europe, this is not, this is not certain. And the third thing is the uh, prospects, or prospective, prospects of globalization or global trade. Globalization in, is in a certain retreat. We don't know whether this is politics, including Trump, Xi uh, war, or, or let's say tension, uh, or whether this is something uh, that is uh, uh, linked to technological change. Uh, after all, artificial intelligence will make uh, things uh, so far uh, made in China uh, profitable made in the US or in France. So uh, we don't really know what, what will the, it will also hit Poland because Poland is like small China for Europe. I know this is a little bit uh, uh, uneasy for us to be, to be compared to, but yes, there are some colleagues in Western Europe who um, compare us with, uh, let's say, small, small China. If this is so, if this technology uh, consequence is, uh, is there, then Poland is going to be hit. Uh, on top of everything, uh, there are political uncertainties that we cannot discard totally. Okay, so now the question is how deep will the slowdown be? If the slowdown is like one or 1.5 percentage points, this is optimal. If we decelerate to from five to 3.5, this is exactly what we think uh, the uh, potential rate of growth is. And in, 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 this, in this case, there will be no negative consequences for the labor market, some negative consequences for, for, the, um, for the fiscal uh, situation, but not dramatic. However, if the situation turns more serious, if the deceleration is like 2.53%, and we land at something like 2%, well, this could be uh, reminiscent of the probably deepest crisis that we have gone through after the transformation crisis, which uh, happened in 2000, 2001, too. Uh, <coughs> remember, there was one year when, or one, one quarter of a year, I happened to be Deputy Prime Minister for Financial Affairs, so I know it, uh, I remember it. The, the rate of growth was 0.1%. So we basically, hit the, the, the stagnation, but not a technical recession at that time. If we come close to this, this may have serious consequences, especially for the fiscal side, especially for the fiscal side. So what are the dangers? Well, of course, deeper slowdown. Uh, deeper slowdown linked to internal, to internal, um, uh, to internal factors like, for example, deceleration of, uh, of private investment, uh, 
if this uh, combines with major international disruption, well, then we can be in a very uncomfortable situation. Then we would close, well, we would have this 2% this, this, uh, or maybe even less scenario. Uh, but again, let me, uh, let, me, let me look at the upside. Polish economy is still, even with a badly uh, changed microeconomic fundamentals here and there, for example, in energy sector. But even with that, Polish economy has quite strong fundamentals and is quite crisis proof. Small debt, basically. Small conservative banking sector. This is basically the, 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 the core of the Polish resistance to crisis. It was so in, two, in 2008, and it could be the same uh, now. So we are not really talking about recession. We are talking about serious deceleration, which may be very costly fiscally. So what is the real danger? The real danger is attempt from the political side to prevent slowdown, to engage in an array of chaotic measures to, uh, to, to stimulate economy, which and the economy does not need stimulation. But okay, we have an election year, and it, this year, next year. So this is the main danger that I am afraid of. Otherwise, we are still on the safe side. Thank you.